The sun generates its energy by a process called nuclear fusion. Nuclear power plants generate heat by a process called nuclear fission. This heat then can be used to generate steam from water, which in turn powers the electrical generators. In this video, we will explore fission and fusion, two physical processes that produce massive amounts of energy from atoms. Fission takes place when a neutron slams into a large, somewhat unstable isotope and splits into two smaller isotopes, also known as fission products. Additional neutrons are also released and they slam into other isotopes to initiate additional fission reactions, also known as chain reactions. Chain reaction is a self-sustaining reaction generating energy or products that cause further reactions of the same kind. When each atom splits, a tremendous amount of energy is released. This energy from nuclear chain reactions is responsible for the massive destruction caused by the detonation of nuclear weapons such as fission bombs. But also it forms the basis of the nuclear power industry. The majority of nuclear power reactors today use uranium-235. The fission of uranium-235 releases three neutrons per fission event. When these neutrons, absorbed by other uranium-235 nuclei, they induce additional fission events and the rate of the fission reaction increases exponentially. There is a minimum mass of fissile isotope required to sustain a nuclear chain reaction. If the mass is too low, too many neutrons are able to escape without being captured and inducing a fission reaction. The minimum mass capable of going through fission reaction is called the critical mass. Now this amount depends on the purity of the material and the shape of the mass, which corresponds to the amount of surface area available from which neutrons can escape and on the identity of the isotope. If the mass of the fissile isotope is greater than the critical mass, then, under the right conditions, the resulting fission reaction can release energy explosively. The energy released by fission in the reactors heats water into steam. The steam is then used to spin a turbine to produce carbon-free electricity. Fusion is the opposite of nuclear fission. It takes place when two atoms slam together to form a heavier atom. Typically, two isotopes of hydrogen fuse to form one helium atom under conditions of extreme pressure and temperature. Fusion is what powers the sun and the other stars. Isotopes of hydrogen, tritium, or hydrogen-3, and deuterium, or hydrogen-2, unite under extreme pressure and temperature to produce a neutron and a helium isotope. Along with this, an enormous amount of energy is released, which is several times the amount produced from fission. Roughly one ton of deuterium has the energy equivalent of approximately 29 billion tons of coal. Supergiant stars, those that have 10 or more times the mass of our sun, have enough mass to create greater gravitational pressure and therefore higher core temperatures than the sun. They go through fusion reactions, helium into carbon, carbon and helium into oxygen, and two carbon atoms into magnesium. This fusion process, however, consumes more energy than it produces. As its energy output declines, the core eventually collapses in a violent explosion known as supernova. As the star explodes, the expanding gas can be sufficiently intense to trigger fusion that creates heavy elements such as uranium. This plus other radioactive elements created in the explosion dumps even more energy into the gas causing it to glow so brilliantly. In a typical fusion reaction, two deuterium atoms combine to produce helium-3, a process known as deuterium-deuterium fusion. In another reaction, a deuterium atom and a tritium atom fuse to produce helium-4, a process known as deuterium-tritium fusion. Initiating these reactions, however, requires a temperature comparable to that in the interior of the sun, which is approximately 1.5 times 10 to the 7 Kelvin. However, on our planet, the Earth, 
it is very difficult to start nuclear fusion reactions that release more energy than is needed to start the reaction. Both nuclei of hydrogen have a positive charge on them, and positive repels positive. So the only way to stop the repulsion is to make the nuclei hit each other at very high speeds, allowing the two nuclei to approach close enough for a fusion reaction to occur. Now in order to do that, we need high pressure and high temperature. The only successful approach so far has been in the nuclear weapons. The hydrogen bomb uses an atomic bomb, which uses fission reactions to start the fusion reactions. Scientists have been trying for decades to find a safe and a working way of controlling and sustaining fusion reactions to generate electricity. Unfortunately, they still have many challenges to overcome before fusion power can be used as a clean source of energy. Both fission and fusion are nuclear reactions that produce energy, but the applications are not the same. Fission is used in nuclear power reactors since it can be controlled. However, there are a couple of problems with fission reactors. First, the starting material. Well, the only way to get plutonium or uranium is to make it. The other problem with fission is the products, or the byproducts. After this nuclear fission reaction, you have this leftover stuff that can be both radioactive as well as chemically active. It's just nasty stuff that you have to deal with. Nuclear fusion will solve both of these problems. Fantastic! It starts with simpler stuff, deuterium, after the reaction, you are left with helium. Think of all the balloons you could blow up with helium. Fusion, on the other hand, is not easily controlled and is expensive to create a suitable condition. So instead of shooting a neutron at an atom in a fission reaction, you have to get two positively charged nuclei close enough together to get them to fuse. This means that you have to have super high atomic energies to start the nuclear fusion. And at present, they are all experimental. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.